drums and water pills. You know, those myrosamide, Bumags, things to get rid of all the swelling. Those things can dry you out too. Those antihistamines, Claritin, Benadryl, Allegra, all those yeah. things to dry up your sinuses. Where else do you think you're drying? <laughs> okay. It's drying. Don't you ever feel your mouth dry when you take those Benadryl and stuff? You're like, you feel like you have cotton balls in your mouth? Well, you got cotton balls in your mouth. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's drying up everywhere. So it's real important, hydration. You have to really be hydrated. Your skin needs hydration. I can't say enough. You must hydrate. It's not just for your skin here, it's for your skin everywhere. You must stay hydrated. So you gotta think about any medications that you may be on that could be drying. Those antihistamines, including the over-the-counter things. You know, your antihistamines we just talked about, your- um, Benadryl. I'm sorry? Benadryl. Benadryl, that's an antihistamine. That helps to drive your sinuses, will drive everything anywhere. You know, so you gotta think about that. Um, other things that can dry, um, dry you up. Those are the most common ones that will do it besides having estrogen dropping. And, the, and you gotta talk about this to your doctor because the best stuff is, of course is the topical, you know. Um, um, but lubes, you can get that over the counter and play with the different lubrications because one may be good for you or one may give you a yeast infection that you don't like. Doesn't mean that the other 300 that exist won't help, you know. And don't be ashamed to say, hey, hand me that, hand it. Hand it to me. Uh uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You need to put it on yours, you need to put it on mine. You know, because it has to go not just in your, in the vaginal area, it has to go in the penis or whatever instrument you're using. Because um, inside, before it gets inside, the, uh, your penis is going to go in first. So put some lubrication on the penis or any device you're using and also put it inside the vaginal area. Okay? And you'll find me way more comfortable, you know? And guess what? The more fun it is, the more likely you're to engage, right? right. You know, nobody right. likes pain. Everybody moves away from pain. Yeah. You know, away from pain towards pleasure. And so that's the JJ story. <laughs> Questions on JJ? The giant JJ? Yes. You say estrogen, and you want to keep the woman lubed. Lubed. So it's estrogen is like me. Vaseline? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's just, oh, by the way, Vaseline, don't use that on condoms. Okay? You'll have a holy bird. Don't use it on condoms. Okay, yes. It's all, let's call it your, um, your Vaseline. The, the lubrication. Um, now, and for men, and men is their testosterone, right? So what keeps it up? Both these things are important. And there's the menopause for the women and the malopause for men, which affects lubrication and ejaculation too, right? How much you ejaculate will determine exactly what your um, fluid level is. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, you said the estrogen drops, especially for menopause, but you also said that younger women Yes. Where would that be also from the estrogen drop? Often because they're on certain medications. Younger women may be on certain medications. They may be taking antihistamines, things for sinuses. But another really important thing, so for some women, they have what they call polycystic ovarian disease or irregular menses. Or overall, when you talk about irregular menses or kidney um, cyst disease or problems with the uterus, the, that means the hormones are off. When the hormones are irregular, bouncing around, sometimes you have periods, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You have excess, um, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> she give me theme music. <laughs> no, sometimes some young people um, have an imbalance in their estrogen to their testosterone, where they're young and they're getting all this facial hair. You know, they're having a lot of hair under the arms, facial hair. And, and for them it's very uncomfortable, but it also affects their vaginal area. It also affects whether they're lubricating well, not just whether their periods are regular or irregular. So if you're um, not menopausal and you're having excess vaginal dryness, you wanna get your hormones checked. And the ones you wanna check, you wanna check your estrogen, progesterone, 
FSH, LH, those are the ones that um, talk to the ovaries, and you wanna check that testosterone level. When we think of testosterone, we're always thinking about men, but testosterone gives women their drive, you know? Testosterone does, women do have testosterone, and that's what gives our drive. Two questions. Yes. In non-menopausal women who, who uh, develop uh, fibroids, Fibroids, yes. Okay. And the second one, what if uh, they've had their ovaries removed? Okay, so ovaries and the uterus are our sex hormone producers. So anytime the ovaries are removed, it's going to affect your hormones. Anytime the uterus is removed, and more than likely, they usually take them both. They usually take the ovaries with the uterus. It's very unlikely unless it's an ovarian cancer or a tumor that maybe they'll leave one, take one. Who will correct me? They took one of both. both. Laparoscopically and left the uterus intact. Oh, okay. That was good. They kept it intact, which did they preserve the, uh, did they preserve the eggs? They kept the eggs? No, they took out the uh, fallopian tube and the ovaries only. Oh, but they, and they didn't leave the, they didn't preserve the eggs. Oh, I did. I got enough jokes. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. okay. What well, she's talking about, sometimes women can get um, enlarged cysts on their ovaries. So the ovaries are supposed to be nice little cute little things. Like men have the little um, testicles. Women have their little, their ovaries that go into. Here's the cervix. Here's the playpen, that's the vagina. I call the vagina the playpen, okay? This is the bassinet. You don't need the bassinet after you go through menopause. You just keep the playpen. Okay, so in the ovaries are eggs, but sometimes one of these eggs get out of control and get really, really big, and they can cause pain. And some of them can become cancerous, become mean and ugly. And so they have to take it out. And sometimes it affects the other one too. But by remaining with the uterus, it gives an opportunity. You can still have children because this is the bassinet crib. And you still have the playpen. So you can still inject there and then they artificially put in the egg and the sperm cell so you can carry the child still. That's what I was asking about preserving the eggs. So, but yes, these produce hormones, back to the questions. And when these are removed, it can affect your hormones. It can affect um, your drive. But the good news, you still have the uterus, which produces hormones, and another organ that's really important, the thyroid. The thyroid, they call it the master gland. It also plays a, a small role, but still a role in keeping us, you know, with our sweating, warm, keeping our hair on our head or our skin dry. So the thyroid, so you wanna make sure your thyroid is also checked. So if any hormone imbalance, FSH, LH, estrogen, testosterone, and your thyroid hormones. Those are the ones you definitely wanna get checked for young people who may be having some kind of imbalance with their hormones, okay? Yes. Is there a general age where a woman decreased in estrogen? Not really. It's the craziest thing. Every person is kind of unique. It kind of runs in family, the range. But some women as young as 35 have been known to go through menopause without a hysterectomy right. and without the ovaries removed. All of a sudden, the period says, we're done. <laughs> you know, the eggs stop coming down. The only purpose for periods are to produce an egg that looks for a sperm cell to have a baby. That's the only reason we have periods, is to get pregnant. Yes. So if you don't have a period, do you just keep all your eggs? The eggs are still, for some people, they're still released, but they're, remember, the period is the, sh well, is the, sh if you think of the uterus, it's changing the sheets on the bed. So the egg comes in, if it doesn't meet a swimmer, a sperm cell, the sheets change. The whole lining of the uterus comes down and gets removed every single month. And that's the period. Take it like take off the sheets on the bed. And then new sheets get put on. And 
then 30 days later, any baby? No baby, take off those sheets, put on new sheets, you know? Some people got comforters in there, their periods last like 70, seven days, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy periods, because they got big old comforters, they don't have those little thin sheets in there, you know? So, um, it can be 35, back to answering your question, all the way to some women are still having a period of 60. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. Does that mean they have more eggs? Oh, well, it has <coughs> everyone pretty much get about 52 eggs. <laughs> but for some reason, some women still are having a period. Now, here's a concern, and this is a medical concern that as soon as you want to know. If you're menopausal, and what's menopause? I can't be using all day today. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't take it out. Take it out. You know, you know, my music, no. If you are a senior that, and have gone through menopause, that means for one entire year you have not had a period. It's not official if you had no period for six months and then you get a period. And then you don't have a period for three months and then you get a period. You are calling circling Pluto. You're in what we call perimenopausal. I'm thinking about it. I'm not certain if I want to stop yet. That's perimenopause. But you're officially done with the game of childbearing once you've gone an entire year with no period. Not a speck, not a drop, okay, of seeing any blood. If you've been menopausal for over a year, and then three years later, all of a sudden, you start having vaginal bleeding. Run <laughs> to your doctor. Don't stop and go. Don't call your girlfriend. Girlfriend, no, not them. Go to your doctor. It is critical. It's emergency because postmenopausal bleeding. The number one thing doctors think about is a cancer. Number one. It's a condition called endometrial cancer. Mm -hmm. That means the sheets have been sitting there too long and start to stink, mm -hmm. and they've developed a cancer. Wow. The lining. But don't bear. It's an easy, easy, easy procedure. Take out the crib. Oh, no. Get rid of the crib. Get rid of the crib. Okay, <laughs> just take it out. You're not having any more children anyway. So you get a foot. Take it straight me. They may the first thing, of course, they're going to recommend is what we call a biopsy. Mm -hmm. They'll put you up in the stirrups, just like if you're having a pap. Yeah. They'll put in what looks like a Q-tip mm -hmm. that would take a piece of the skin off of the endometrium. Mm -hmm. Not comfortable. Take two Tylenol before you go. Mm -hmm. No one will know. But take two Tylenol because it's not fun because they're taking like a piece of skin off of you. Anybody ever had it? Yeah. So yeah. not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not fun, right? Yeah. They didn't tell you to take two Tylenol, did they? No. Mm -hmm. See, I know. I'm not into pain, so uh, you don't want to take Motrin or Aleve because those things make you bleed. But the Tylenol should, have, should make you bleed, right? So they take a little piece of skin and they send it to see and identify if it's a cancer, right? A lot of times it's not. But you do want to run because if it is a cancer, we can cure it. And if we can cure it quickly, we should. So if it's not a cancer, they give you a DNC and you're good. And you're good. And, but they'll watch you. They'll watch you. So every six months, They'll have you come back and check the area. What's a DNC? A DNC, you know, discover and celebrate. No. Um, a DNC they is. They force you clean the sheets. <laughs> yes, they force you, exactly. Since you haven't cleaned your sheets in a long time, they do it for you. So if this is your uterus, what they do is they take us, what I call a spatula, and they go in there and scrape out the lining. Manually, manually, yeah. I know, it's not fun. Good thing you're unconscious for that one. They're not going to go in and go, and you're awake, that, that was evil, that would be evil. If anybody tells you they're not putting, giving you some anesthesia or something, run. You know, they're called working or somebody. Don't do it, you know, we, we, especially that area. That area is a lot of sensitivity, you know. So it's a surgical procedure and they scrape the lining. But why they call it DNC, dilate. This area right here, the music. Y'all must be winning the lottery, because I know they calling you for that money. 
the front of the the front of the uterus is called the cervix, right? It stays closed. When you look at it this way, it's closed. You can't get the spatula in there because it's closed. So what they do is they dilate it. And you think, well, how do they dilate it? There are instruments that they put inside with different um, thickness, like straws. You know, you have the little eeny bitty straw, and you try to do a smoothie through the straw, it's like, <laughs> that's the little one. And then you get the McDonald's straw, <laughs> which is the nice big fat one. And by the way, you know why they do the big straws at McDonald's? What do you think? They want you to drink more. Consume it. <laughs> you consume more, you know? It, you, you absorb more, you, you take in more. Then you want another one, and then that's the sugar's higher than this whole other stuff. <laughs> but, so go to Burger King and get the tiny straw. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. But it's usually tiny. So they put in different dilators, mm -hmm. types of straws, the metal, that opens it up and opens it till it's wider. So now they can put the spoon in, which is called a curatage, mm -hmm. to curate, and they scrape out that lining. Okay, and then it takes about two or three weeks before this thing goes back to that size. So you're going to have some bleeding, you know, but the bleeding is supposed to stop within two to three weeks. It's not like having a baby all over again. I know, it's not feel good. It's not feel good, but guess what? You know what don't feel good? Cancer, so, you know, it's expensive too, so. You know, do this. Yes, do this. Yeah. As opposed to sitting around bleeding and, and you've already had menopause and then two years later, it's not only in the uterus, it's spread all over your pelvic area. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, at a certain age, I know we all say the age. The young girls nowadays not having babies, not having miscarriage, their age disappeared with age. Well, it's not so they disappeared, they, they've already Use them up. Use them up. Mm -hmm. You know, so for instance, remember I said the range can be 35 to 60. Yeah. So doctors recommend having babies before 40. Thank you. You know? And the reason they recommend having them before 40 is because they start turning to raisins. And they the eggs start having genetic problems. Down syndrome. So by like Down syndrome yeah. increases every year after 35. So they make you do special tests to make sure the child doesn't have a Down syndrome or other um, genetic problems. Yeah. And we know after 40, it increases by 50%. Yeah. You run a 50-50 chance that your child will have a problem. Because yeah. as I said, those eggs are turning to raisins. You know, so you wanna have, if possible, the child is before yeah. 40, before 40. I had my first at 32. I feel older and wiser. So he was putting his hand in the VCR. Okay, come on. <laughs> okay, you covered yourself in Vaseline. Okay. Oh, you know, you were wiser, you're calmer. Right. Younger mom, the 21. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you turned 32, you were like, okay. Guess what? Well, well, I'm <laughs> well, I know about that. I thought Jen's baby was, was cute. To say, it wasn't Dr. They just told us that yeah. the longer you wait, the baby come out more wrinkle and old. That's what they yeah. used to say. We just listen to them. Not saying we want to have one then, sure. but that's what they say. It's like we were talking about none before. Before they were saying if you use a raisin, it's going to come out looking like a raisin. Yeah. Oh. No, exactly. But the, the key, though, is yes, women can have children over 40. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. You just yeah. really want to get all your tests done. You really want to have a good gynecologist who works, an obstetrician who works with women over 40 because you have additional risk that you can work with. You can work with them. You can. As long as you're menstruating, you can get pregnant. There are a lot of women who have those late babies. I know you have some friends. 38. You know, in 38. In their 40s. My neighbor across the street, she was. 40 when she got pregnant. See? And she lost her husband to COVID the following oh, year. Wow. She, she was 51. 
Moving them stuff out of their way. Right. <laughs> Remember we talked about last yeah. time. Yes. Sorry, I got a lot of questions today. <laughs> um, okay. We got a young like, bucket in the room. Th there's like, like the old people used to say, like, if you're craving something and you don't get it, it's going to show on the baby. Okay. okay. So I have this birthmark. Yes. And my mom said it's because she wanted some um, dumpling and she didn't get it. <laughs> Is there any medical truth to that? No. Because a lot of people be saying that. Yeah, and, and that also does that also match up with like mm -hmm. how your emotions could affect like the baby's health and stuff? Uh, I, I cannot say I have <laughs> any facts to support that because I wanted to be a millionaire and, uh, and when I was pregnant, you know, and I don't know what happened to them kids. They all came out to Jesus and they didn't have any spots or anything. Only their scalp was flaky. Maybe that was it. I don't know. They ended up with eczema, but we all had eczema, you know. I um, know well your desires in pregnancy show up as marks on the baby, I have no science behind it. What I do know, if your nutrition is poor, if you're eating bags of potato chips and soda, your baby will be affected. If you're doing drugs, smoking marijuana, drinking um, alcohol, shooting up, your baby will be affected, okay? So you have to walk straight, straight. Mm -hmm. when you're pregnant, that's right. you know, because that baby will come with problems, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Last one, I promise. <laughs> Is it true that if you're missing nutrients and things like that, the baby will just take it from you? Like if you don't have enough bone, yeah. something for bone, the baby will just take it from your yeah. bone? They have a big old parasite inside you. I'm telling you, they take everything. They, they, they take your water, they milk, all your vitamins, your calcium. So it's real important to take the prenatal vitamins. And yeah. now they recommend six months. If you know you want to have a baby, and I know I'm young, but yeah. if you, anybody know, you know you want to have a baby, six months before, minimum, start taking your prenatal vitamins. Because you want to fortify. If you know you're anemic, start taking your iron. Because the baby needs 500 extra calories not 5,000 to stop feeding these pregnant girls. You know? You're, you're eating for two. No, you're eating for a little, little thing this big. It's like a little puppy. You know how you, you just yeah. put one scoop? 500 calories. All that little baby needs extra a day. So don't stop giving them 5,000. You know? Girl, eat up. You're pregnant. Stop it. <laughs> because they, if they get too big, it can be a risky pregnancy. You should not gain more than 25 pounds in pregnancy. You've got these 40, these big watermelon babies being born, you know, and they can run the risk of having diabetes. Your mother can run the risk of developing diabetes in pregnancy if they gain too much weight, you know? 500, what's 500? It's an extra meal. That's all it is, one extra meal a day, you know? But you do need to take your vitamins, you do need to take your iron, you need to take your calcium, and if you can't tolerate milk, they have calcium tablets that you can take. You know, those are the things you have to do. Hydrate, eat right, and exercise. Let the pregnant women exercise. It helps support the pelvic floor. And remember, it's you gotta, that, that delivery is no joke. It's work. <laughs> that is work. They have to be strong for it. So walking helps to strengthen the whole body and the pelvic floor. Yes. I'm, You'll get sure, I'm sure glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> right? I'm sure glad I'm not a woman. Now we go through a lot, right? Yeah, yes. 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 You'll get more questions. I'm sorry, last one, last one, last one. She said that last one. She said one. promise. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why you all had to pay. Uh, uh, is that why the women, the women in those like um, underdeveloped countries have quicker, easier birth versus us here? Well, they have are on their feet all the time. But in many other countries, I mean, the majority of people, pregnant or not, do a lot of walking. They walk everywhere. Yeah. Not only that, they pretty much, a lot of them go to these, these grocery stores daily. They go to marketplace daily. They're not storing foods. Our foods are, are highly preserved. You know, we have fridges that we're preserving a lot of things. So fresh foods help, you know, being on your feet and exercising daily, drinking water, not all these extra juice, sugar. Water. Why was it that when I got pregnant, my husband showed the symptoms of uh, throwing up, uh, sleeping all the time? You know, why, why was... 
there's a lot of theory about what they call sympathetic pregnancy. Oh, okay. The sympathy of pregnancy. Men, a man become sympathetic with their spouse and their partner. You know, they also say if you live long enough with somebody, you start looking like them. Yeah. You know, yeah, so he gets bald, you get bald. You know, he gets married, you get a beard. No. <laughs> but, but they get in pregnancy. Sometimes partners do become sympathetic, like you said, become sleepy when you sleep, they gain weight when you gain weight. What I want to see is they start <laughs> looking <laughs> for you, carrying all the stuff for you, stuff with the lifted uh, stuff. They can take the pregnancy. Thing. That's the kind of sympathy I think yeah. I want women to get. Any questions? Any questions on JJ's? Yeah. Next time we'll do men. We'll do okay. the testosterone. Because <laughs> women need to know, you know? Yeah. I want everyone to be sexually intelligent. You may not be sexually active, but you should be sexually intelligent. Yeah. My goal is for the all these myths to be, be buried, you know? And you can have sex after menopause. Just because you're not having a period does not mean you no longer should have sex. That's been the best right? That's been the best period. Yeah, that's the best time. You can't get pregnant. The <laughs> lactobacilli. Lactobacilli. The lactobacilli. Bacteria. Okay. When the, you say when that goes down, goes that, down, you yeah, get a yeast infection. You can, okay. you can, you can't get you an can get yeast infection. Yogurt helps this. Yogurt. Oh, yogurt. So Eating I'm yogurt sorry. or probiotics, yeah. you can get the, the probiotics and have that. So if you're on antibiotics, I always um, suggest you, you make sure you eat a lot of yogurt if you're going to be taking antibiotics for any long period of time. You know, two or three days, no big deal. But if you're going to be like three weeks on the antibiotics, maybe you're doing oral surgery in your mouth and they, may, they want you on the antibiotics to protect your heart. You may want to boost up on your yoga. Well, I, I have finite, finite, so I'm constantly taking um, Benadryl, no, Benadryl or 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 Zytol or Vertex or something like that. Yogurt would help that too. For you, for for the restoring the life of bicilla, yes. Okay. But you said that also dries out the estrogen. Yes, yes. So the. Yogurt would do that too. The yogurt helps to restore the lactobacilli, which will help prevent you getting infections. Okay. The hormones is what is causing the dryness. Okay. But if you have vaginal dryness and have antibiotics that decrease the lactobacillus, so now you're dry and itchy because the yeast develops. So we don't want that. Nor do you want the bacterial vaginosis, which gives that fishy odor. You know, you can't cook fish down. <laughs> what falls into the two category urine infection? Urinary tract infection. Very interesting. Menopause is a. Let me tell you, it's not. It's not pretty. Between the hot flashes, the memory, the mood swings, and some people don't get any of that. I don't. But one of the things that you can I get do. is frequent urination, because the estrogen also impacts the bladder. You know. So, but before you call it low estrogen and menopause, make sure you don't have a urinary tract infection because if you start going to the bathroom a lot, it could be an infection. The other thing that it could also be your, your water pill, of course, that you have an associated hydrochlorothiazide, furosemide, bumex, all those will make you go to the bathroom all the time. Diabetes. If your blood sugar goes up, your body tries to get rid of the excess sugar by making you urinate all the time to get rid of it. So get to your doctor, check your sugar, check for infection, and make sure that um, you don't have a bladder infection. And yes, you end up going more when you go through menopause. You know? But this is after menopause. Yeah, after menopause, yeah. After menopause, I mean way after. So start, make sure you do the exercise. Every time you go pee, do the Kegel exercises. Pee, stop, pee, stop, pee, stop. It helps to strengthen mm -hmm the pelvic floor and the bladder. So try and get up to 10. Go in the bathroom, and if you lose your urine a lot, go in the bathroom, and when you go to urinate, pee a little bit and stop the flow. Pee a little, men do it too, stop the flow. <laughs> It'll help to strengthen your bladder. Your goal is to get, well you can do it 10 times, pee stop, pee stop, pee stop, pee stop. Oh. <laughs> and it'll strengthen the bladder so that you can hold it longer. That's Kegel? Oh. Kegel exercises, yes. It's also good for sex because you're also supporting 
squeezing and, <laughs> and releasing, squeezing and releasing. This is learning how to control that area down there. Every need. Yeah. Don't let the urine just come. You know, really try to not just stop it so you can get there. But when you get there, go a little, hold, go a little, and hold, and see if you can get up to ten times over the month. So you start the first one three times. The next week, go to four and try to get up to it <laughs> ten times. That makes sense because eventually you'll be able to hold it. <laughs> it's really a great exercise. You don't have to run all the time. It just takes time. It takes time. It's a muscle, and you're strengthening that muscle. You know, so it takes time to strengthen the muscle. All right, guys, got to run. Any questions? Thank you guys for coming. Great questions. Remember, please like and share on Instagram and Facebook for me. Um, the more likes and share again, the more they let me come back. And I love any questions. So again, it's Dr. MC Powell. Very easy, Dr. MC Powell. Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on TikTok.